One of the most important skills in the chemical reactions unit is being able to identify what type of chemical reaction is taking place. This allows us to predict the type of products that are produced by the reaction based on its type. So over the next two videos, we're going to be learning about the six major types of chemical reactions and how those reactions can be represented by what we call general formulas. We're going to start with arguably the most straightforward type of chemical reaction, what we call a synthesis reaction, exemplified by the reaction below in which magnesium metal is burned in the presence of oxygen gas. Now we can recognize that magnesium and oxygen are both elements rather than compounds and when they react together the two elements combine together in order to form a specific compound. In this case as we'll take a look in the chemical formula, magnesium and oxygen combine together in order to form magnesium oxide. Now, for those that know that we need to balance a chemical reaction, don't worry, there will be a separate video that will look at the process of reaction balancing. So for now, all of our equations will be in what we call the skeletal form. Now, obviously, this is not the only example of a synthesis reaction for which we can use a general formula to represent all synthesis reactions. So the two elements, magnesium and oxygen, we can represent simply as A and B, and because A and B combine together in order to form a compound, we can represent the compound as AB. Now, if we take a look at the second example of a synthesis reaction here, this one looks a little bit different and doesn't follow our rule exactly. In this reaction, we are going to be reacting liquid water with carbon dioxide gas in order to produce an acid H2CO3. Now, this reaction is different in that we start with two small compounds, that being water and carbon dioxide, rather than individual elements in order to produce a larger compound, that being H2CO3, carbonic acid. However, because this reaction still follows the A plus B goes to AB, we can also classify this as a different type of synthesis reaction. Logically, the next type of reaction that we're going to learn about is what we call the decomposition reactions. So decomposition is where we get the English word to decompose from, which means to break down into smaller pieces. And decomposition reactions are the literal reverse of a synthesis reaction. So instead of starting with our two elements, we're actually going to start with our compound. In the general formula, we can say simply represent this as AB. And in this case, we take our compound and we can decompose it into the separate elements. So in this case, A and B decompose to produce elements A and B separate from each other. So here, unlike in the synthesis reaction, we end up with two or more individual elements as the products with our compound being the starting reactant. So in our example here, we're taking the compound aluminum oxide, and because aluminum and oxygen are the elements that make up aluminum oxide, we can decompose this compound into aluminum metal and into oxygen gas, which we represent as being O2 because oxygen is a diatomic compound. Now, just like with synthesis reactions, how it is actually possible to take smaller compounds and synthesize a larger compound, the same is true with decomposition reactions in which a large compound is usually subjected to some form of heat in order to get it to break apart, but this large compound decomposes in order to make two or more smaller compounds rather than individual elements. So if we take a look at copper 2 carbonate, when this compound is heated, it decomposes into carbon dioxide gas and 
copper 2 oxide, and we can see that if we were to write the synthesis reaction, adding copper 2 oxide and carbon dioxide together, we would end up with our reactant back in this case. And because it technically follows the AB decomposes to A plus B formula, we can likewise classify this as a decomposition reaction. The final type of reaction in this video is what we call the single replacement reaction, although depending on your chemistry teacher, they may use a different word. Some chemistry teachers prefer to use the word displacement, although these two terms are effectively interchangeable, and it's not uncommon to refer to this type of reaction as single replacement or single displacement. These reactions are different than synthesis and and decomposition reactions because we can see in both of our examples we actually have one element and one compound as our starting reactants. So in our first reaction we can represent zinc simply as A because it's an element and hydrochloric acid HCl as BC. Those that remember our previous video also remember that we looked at the reaction of zinc in hydrochloric acid previously. Now for those that actually remember that video, you can see that there are bubbles produced in this reaction because here's the replacement part of the reaction. In this first example, zinc is actually going to replace the hydrogen on HCl. And this is because zinc and hydrogen, even though hydrogen isn't a metal, because hydrogen more commonly loses electrons rather than gaining electrons, hydrogen and zinc, when they exist in compounds, both form cations. So in this case, zinc is taking the place of hydrogen that would normally function as the cation in order to make a new compound, zinc chloride in this case. So in this case, zinc, the metal, and we're going to put metal in quotation marks here um, simply because hydrogen is not technically a metal, but normally functions the way that cations do. So the single metal or cation in element form replaces the cation, which again we're going to put in quotes as a metal here within the ionic compound in order to produce a different ionic compound here. And of course, the bubbles that we generate here are hydrogen gas, which is our element. So if we go to our general formula that we see here, we see that element A is displacing or replacing element B in the compound BC. So that means in our products, element B is going to be by itself. This, again, is usually some sort of metal, but alternatively, it can be a, a, an element that functions as a cation in an ionic compound. And then, of course, we have our second compound, which is AC, produced when A replaces B, like so. Now, we can see that this is not always true because here in example number two, chlorine and bromine are actually nonmetals. So we're going to put nonmetal in quotes here. Uh, but when we're dealing with ionic compounds, it's more correct to refer to these as anions instead. So even though chlorine is by itself here, because chlorine and bromine both gain electrons in order to form ions, they would exist as anions. And so what we would expect is that chlorine would displace bromine in the compound here and function as the anion in the new compound that we're going to make. So if we switch chlorine and bromine's place here, we would end up with potassium chloride as our product and bromine by itself like this. So unlike in example one where the metals or 
cations replace each other. In example two, it is actually the non-metals or the anions that are replacing one another, and therefore we can write a modified form of the general formula that we see. So if we represent chlorine as A and potassium bromide as BC, this time A and C are replacing one another so that we would then have C, element C in this case bromine by itself, and BA as the new ionic compound that we've created as a result of the single displacement. This concludes part one of the types of reactions video. In the next video, we're going to be introducing the next three types of chemical reactions, as well as going over the general formulas in order to help you predict when these types of reactions occur.